Hi there. It's me again. Hope you guys are hanging in there. Keep on showing yourself. It's very important. Even though there's really tough stuff going on out there, always show yourself. Today, I thought we were going to talk about the history of this particular instrument. Not this particular guitar, but this instrument, the Fender Stratocaster. It's an amazing invention, amazing design. I mean, I go through a little bit of the differences of the very first ones and so on. This is one I've had since I was a little kid, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, just the design of this is just amazing. It came out in 1954, but it was a little different then. So I'm going to start talking about how it all started. It started actually with this guy guitar here, which is the only one I have. It's a Telecaster. This one was designed by Leo Fender and all his friends in around 1948 or 49, I think. It was called Broadcaster. Then it was sued by Gretsch and called a Telecaster a couple of years later. As you can see, um, it's a very different guitar from a traditional uh, uh, acoustic guitar, for instance. It likes, that's, it's made from a block of wood and it's got a bolt-on neck, which is totally new at the time. Uh, the, the original ones actually had a maple neck, okay, which is a very important part. You had a, instead of a, for a thousand years, string instruments were made with a glued fretboard on, like this. This one here doesn't have it. So the original Telecasters actually had no fretboard glued on. They had to put a frets right in the neck, which is crazy. And as you can see, all the pegs are in one row. And all the string pull is straight, whereas on the other guitars, they were fan out and so on. So anyways, this was the first one. And then in 1953, they designed something that was out in 1954. This is actually a 1954 guitar. This is a very, very, very early one. It was before they even had machines to make them. It was March 54. And this is amazing. It's an amazing design then, and it's an amazing design now. This tremolo unit here is still the best. They have other so-called improvements everybody puts on there. No, this is the per perfect tremolo. It, it, it works, it has, um, height and intonation for each string as you can see again the strings are straight through here so they don't get stuck and the head stuck in one low row instead of all the other traditional guitars and it, see this has the frets right on the neck the neck is one piece and the truss rods in the back and you see these things look at this no one ever had that made this was made for ergo ergonom ergonom ergonomic reasons and anyway, when this came out in 1954, it freaked out all the other guitar companies so much. So obviously the other guitar company, which I love by the way too, uh, Gibson, they were making guitars like this, which is a much more traditional guitar. As you can see, the shape is like an acoustic guitar. The neck has the same sort of, you know, construction as an acoustic guitar with the strings, the pegs on both sides and glued in neck and everything's beautiful guitar anyway when this came out the strap came out these guys figured they had to come come back with some sort of a <laughs> response and they came out with this 1958 which is a great guitar i love flying these but i think that they just want to make something that looked crazy because they thought the strap was crazy and this is just a crazy looking guitar whereas the strap is actually made to have perfect balance and all that stuff and um so that was interesting. And then the guitar itself <coughs> developed a little bit. From 1954 to 1959, they made only maple necks with a small head stuff. Only maple necks. In 1959, they started making only rosewood necks. This is 1959. Uh, these are more known for being early 60s, but this is actually from a 59. And you can see it's a uh, you know, it's got a glued on rosewood fingerboard, whereas this does not. In 1968, then a couple of small other things happened. In 1966, they started making a big headstock. A lot of people think that happened later. That was actually 1966. They started, and it was still rosewood. In 1968, they came out with this one, which is well known from Jimi Hendrix's uh, 
performers at Woodstock. This is called a maple cap. They started making a maple fingerboard again, but no skunk stripes. And no, the construction was as if they had a rosewood neck. They just glued a maple cap on it. And you can see, yeah. <laughs> so um, this, these are one of my favorites. I used to use these for a long time. So in 1971, they made a change to this one, which has a neck adjustment here. It's known as a bullet neck. It's very, very smart. But at the same time they did that, they also decided to put three bolts instead of four bolts to hold the neck in, which was not so smart. So someone like me who throws the guitars around, then all of a sudden the neck won't stay in like it should. So I think this was brilliant. This is not so brilliant. This is from 1979, 71 to about 79, they made it like this, 80 maybe. And so in 1986, I'm very honored. Dan Smith and the whole team from Fender came to my show at Long Beach Arena in California. And they said, we want to make your model. And I'm like, wow, this is a great honor because Fender never did that to anybody. And they measured all my guitars. And they had some really old guitars at the time. And that has now become this one here. This is my model, which has everything that I think is the best of all the years, okay? So it does have the bullet truss rod, which is really, really good. But it has a four bolt neck. So the neck is held in with four bolts, but it has that adjustment. Then of course my scallops and the Seymour Duncan pickups and all that stuff. Stock tremolo, but you know, it's basically, where's my old, the one duck there? That's what I did to the duck. I took it, that was a three bolt originally. There's this short story about the Stratocaster.